everyone. Oh no, Haley, I'm so sorry. I hope you guys aren't too sick. That's very nice of your care of the baby, so. Whoops, I can hear myself. Leaning in. Poof, there we go. Now I once again, let me fix my screen here. I can, whoop. I don't know what I did. I made everything so big so I can't watch and talk at the same time. It happens every now and then. There we go. Just gotta keep pressing buttons. Hi Terry, hi Jody, Haley, Patty G, Denise. Hi Helen in the future when you watch the replay. For those of you that are watching the replay, it's 10 minutes to three, so we're just gonna chitter chatter. Hi, Village Stutter. Now I can put you guys back over there where you belong, and I can see and chat. Unless I, yes, I did freeze myself. Of course I froze myself. Sue D from the UK, and I think I saw Emma before I refreshed everything. Now I have to wait for the internet to catch up with my voice. Let's see what we have. Come on, internet. You can do it. This is how I spend my days normally, talking to myself. Come on, internet. Come on, sewing machine. You can do it. Oh, rotary cutter, you're such a good friend. Just kidding, I don't talk to the rotary cutter or the sewing machine unless they misbehave and then I swear at them. There's Jackie and Barbara and the Cajun Crafter, Sherry, Linda, Amorous, there we go, working on project bags. I almost had that right. Linda, did you get some of that crazy weather in Texas? It looks like you guys have had a couple weeks of just nasty stuff. It's come down into Florida, but it hasn't come down far enough to hit my area, thank goodness. Although we could use a little bit of rain would be nice. We are so dry. Ooh, no damage, I hope. Teresa's here. Hello, everybody. Look, I'm even prepared. Just don't ask me how long it's been since I got because you know then I have to tell you the truth and say I just finished preparing everything but when you wake up in the morning and you're like okay it's 7 a.m. by the time I you know got breakfast and showered and watered the plants and all that and I'm like I've got plenty of time that's what eight hours before the live stream I can do everything I need to do and I've got all day long no I didn't have all day next thing I knew it was 220 and I'm still cutting strips I'll talk about my plans for this once we get more people in and everything. You know, it's after 3 o'clock we get started. So that way you guys don't have to hear it twice. But I'm using 30s fabric. That should be fun. Hi, Nance James from California. Hemet, California. The words, they're so small. Dixie Doodles, hello, hello. Everyone's starting to come in and say hi because I pressed that fancy button, the one that says go live. It is gloomy. I'm going to look out the window. It is gloomy, gloomy here. Overcast all day. It has been like an oven. The wind yesterday was so bad, it kept blowing over the recycle bins. It was trash day. There's been so much garbage. Just, hi, Agnes, coming through. It's just been crazy and then today it's still a bit windy and when you walk out and it gets to, it, I don't know if you guys like Texas you'll understand but when you walk out and the air is so hot it almost feels like it's cooking your lungs it's like opening the oven door when you have it set to like 450 500 and that heat just hits you and that's the way it's been yeah I have a bundle of fat quarters and I just need to use them up I bet you guys can't guess what I'm going to make with this when I'm done making my quarter log cabins. I set aside the really pretty ones that I like a lot. 
I'm down in Cape Coral, Florida. That's Southwest Florida. I'm a couple hours south of Tampa and a few hours north of Key West, if that means anything to anybody. Yeah, it's usually like that later on in the year, but because there's there's no no rain or anything, and the fire hazard's so bad, there's been so many fires around here. Not like California fires, thank goodness. Our fires are still, you know, just a couple hundred acres and not thousands. And the last one, thankfully, nobody lost their home or life. But we are in such a, a dry season, and the fire danger is so high. I've been watching them storms. They come over from Texas and go across Louisiana and Mississippi. They hit the panhandle. Now the panhandle got a lot of the tornadoes. And it, this storm is like stopping just north of us, probably about an hour north of me. And then it just kind of fizzled out. We might get a little drizzle here and there, but it doesn't look like it. I would love to share some of this weather with y'all with the snow, and I actually would like some of your snow because snow would melt down here and we'd have water. My grass is just starting to get a little bit green, which means the weeds are getting a little bit green too. Oh, Linda, that's so scary. I was watching the news this morning, well, listening to the news while doing things, and in Port Charlotte, Charlotte County, it's, so here's Lee County, and then Charlotte County is the next one right above us, so maybe like a 45-minute drive, and they said that the fire had come right up to their property line, and the heat was so hot that it burst one of those, those big blue plastic pools. We have a lot of those above-ground pools here because you can just get them at Walmart and they're cheap, and the heat was so hot that it burst that pool flooded their yard and put out the fire. They said it was just like a miracle. It was just so crazy. Hello, Carolyn. Sunglasses, hat, go. Well, the Gulf temperatures, in, last week it was 80 degrees, so I'm sure it's even warmer this week. So that's definitely, you can easily go to the beach. Robbie was at the beach today with his girlfriend. He's gonna stop by after the live stream. I can meet his new girlfriend, that's so exciting. I'm sure it's in the mid 80s here. It was 82 earlier, so. As it gets later in the day, it always gets warmer. Between three and six or so, it gets really hot. But it's in the backyard right now, so we don't have to worry about that here too much. Hi, Pat. Hi, Kathy. Hope everyone is having a good day. Are y'all gearing up to Easter? When is Easter? Easter is the 17th, so we got a bit of time still. My son Robbie's birthday is on the 8th. He is going to be 23. I just realized this morning, I'm only 53, but I am closer to 60 than I have ever been. And I thought, oh my. Because well, I'm not gonna say 60 is old, but when you're 25 or 30, 60 does seem old and it kind of just sticks in your head. So now that I'm getting closer to 60, I thought, oh my, I'm really turning into a little old lady here. I have my three cats. I live alone. April 9th, happy birthday, Rage, Raging Smirk. Nice name. Hi, Susan. Oh, I hope the plumber's not too bad, and I hope it's not too expensive. Oh, Scarlet will be fun for Easter. You can do even a simple egg hunting. For the little guys down here, they just throw a whole bunch of colorful eggs out on the grass at the church and stuff, so they can just run around and scream and grab everything. Oh, winter springs. Yeah, you guys probably had some of that nasty rain coming up. Oh, 76, Linda. I'm just hoping I can last until 76. I really, I really want to hit a hundred. To be honest, I want to hit a hundred, but that is so many years. That's like a lifetime away. Oh, as I said, I know I'm still young, but 60, when you're, when you're in your thirties, you think about when you're going to get older and you know, when you retire, when you're really old, you know, like when you're 60, but then when you start hitting 45 and 50, then 60 is not old anymore. We are making, oh, it's three o'clock. We are going to make the quarter log cabin like I posted the video for this morning. Today, we are mostly going to be some chatting. The log cabin, we've made log cabins several times. You saw the video this morning. 
I will discuss it as I'm sewing it, but I don't think we need a really hardcore tutorial today. Hi, Devi. I, I think it's going to be just one of those days where if anyone has any questions about anything, crafting, if you know, life in general, whatever we can help with, we can just chat away, discuss projects, and just sew. I have the fabric cut out. I put a link in the description box to this video. Oh, Sherry, sorry, that is, yeah, that's going to be a, a tough one. I know 60 just sounds so young, doesn't it, Barbara? Well, 100th birthday party. Yeah, I'm, I'm hoping not, if you're going to get to 100, you really hope to not have to use a walker too much or be, you know, too much. You want to still be healthy and out walking and doing stuff. And they say a lot of that has to do with what we do now when we're young. I went to Red Pepper Quilts. I love her blog. She has so many amazing patterns and stuff. She has a quarter log cabin and hers, she used strips that are one and a quarter inch wide. I put the blog address in the description box down below this video because she gives measurements. So she tells you, I'll give you a quick little peek. She gives you this diagram. Focus in your face there we go and she tells you where to put your logs and she tells you how long each log needs to be so i got my designer board here it's happy birthday to barbara i didn't want to say it barbara unless you wanted to say you had your birthday big happy birthdays just one second want to take care of a little business there oh yes April Fool's Day we never did anything for that so I don't even really pay much attention to it I cut out a bunch of I cut my I, ah, ha, ha, ha. I pre cut my strips it's a three and a half inch block a square for her center square so that's kind of big actually because she's only using one and a quarter inch logs so they range anywhere from three and a half inches up to seven and a quarter. I cut mine just maybe a quarter an inch, half an inch longer. And I have them all here and I pin them. I put the little measurement there. So I pin those on. I put my pins in sideways so they don't stick out the bottom. And I just stack them all up. Some of them you do like log two and three are both the same size, four and five are the same size. So I just put a little times two for each of them. I'm hoping to make four blocks today. So that way I doubled up on a bunch of them and eventually I'll do eight so that, so that I can make a tote bag. I was reading Jackie's comment. Top stitching, it depends on what I'm doing. I never used to like it before, but once I was able to do it and do it and enjoy the the look on the way it ends up being then I don't mind I don't mind it too much I do get a little um discouraged and frustrated when that's the end of my tote bags and the last thing I need to do is do two rounds of top stitching but since I do it a lot with the quilt as you go zipper pouches and stuff it really doesn't bother me much anymore oh bowl cozies Jackie I just sold my last two bowl cozies and I've been pulling fabric for it I just don't like making bowl cozies, but they sell so well, so I have to put them in the shop. So Jackie, I'm right there with you. I do not like those. So what I'm thinking is the little thing I'm going to do is with the turning spot, I think I'm going to make it, leave that piece of fabric large. So when you tuck it in, you just don't have a quarter inch or maybe three eighths inch of a seam to tuck in. So you have a lot. And then instead of doing an eighth of an inch all the way around, I'm going to do a generous quarter. And I think that's going to make it a lot easier for me than just trying to top stitch right along the edge. Because there's so much stuff there and it's frustrating and I do not like it. Bowl cozies are super simple and easy to make. They're great for gifts. You know, stock up on them, make a bunch throughout the year and you'll have them for Christmas and stuff. But I don't like it. Oh, Barbara, Barbara, I'm so sorry. Jody, Jody, you're just, you're a trooper, Jody. You really are a very strong woman. 100.75, she almost made it. Hi, 
I have no idea what Sue is trying to tell us. Jody likes to do top stitching. Okay, Jackie, send all of your stuff over to Jody because she's really great at getting her projects done on time. Ha ha ha. The year of first is tough. The year of seconds isn't too bad, but it's still a bit of a struggle. And then it, for me, at least, it started to ease up a little bit. Oh, I love the theory of the AccuQuilt cutter, but I just haven't found it to be not frustrating. No matter what I do, it always gets frustrating for me. I think Sue's having problems with her computer. Sue, come back to us. Okay, I'm gonna get started and we'll just work through this. And like I said, we'll just do some sewing and chatting. I, 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 I just, just don't know where to put anything is. You know, I have a dining room table here. This is a decent sized table. It's not huge, but it's decent sized and there's still never enough room. Let's see if I, ha ha. Oh, no, that's not going to work because then i got to reach across you guys all the time. I'll just set you over here. I think I'm going to sew. Should we do one block just to get a feel for it? And then just sit here and chain stitch the afternoon away? Do you guys need to see one block being made? Or can we just chain stitch and make three or four at a time? I've heard good things about the Sizzix, plus it's a little bit smaller too, isn't it? It doesn't seem as bulky and... Oh, that's right, you're dealing with your shattered screen. Did it work? All right, we're just gonna go ahead and change stitch. So I think I'll just bring this one over. I'll bring over this guy. Let me see. I want to start with a lot of the 30s fabric it's okay it's I'm not like a huge fan with all of it but it's all right I, I like it I think it's more I like the colors it's more of the the designs I'm not always a huge fan of chain 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 of fools okay if you tell me that's a song hi Susie I even filled a bobbin today before starting. I'm like, whoa, fancy, fancy. I am at a quarter inch seam. Because these are really small, I did see that there were some paper pieced of the log cabins and the quarter log cabin. I thought if you're going to do little narrow logs like this, that might be helpful. So if anyone has any questions, just capitalize it or repeat it 12 times. The moderators or I will catch it eventually. If anyone has an answer to the questions, please just go ahead and give them the answer. Don't wait for me. You guys are really good about that. I can't see. There's a glare. There we go. The studio, I heard the studio is good. I, I heard the studio, I mean, of course you're paying good quality money for it and you have the, they have like the wooden trays and stuff. I heard the studio was much better than the regular go cutter. Plus I had the very, very old one, almost like the, when they really blew up on the blogs and, and AccuQuilt was giving away left and right and having people make videos for the dyes and giving away dyes. I think maybe they're new ones. They have that neat little box set. That one looks really good. I only brought over one square. Let's do a peachy. And we will do... I'll see if I actually make these so that they're a little bit different. I'd like to make eight of them, four for one side of a tote and four for the other side of a tote. 
don't know if you can see, but I just cut them. I made however my fat quarters were. Some of the fat quarters were turned into zipper pouches already, so they had weird shapes taken out of them. And I just cut a bunch of three and a half inch squares because I thought I'd make a tote uh, or something out of the three and a half inch squares. And then I cut as many strips as I could to get at least three, whether they were short or long. head in the game here. I say we do at least four. Was that two, three, four? Red and green. It's all gonna blend in together. I like when they take them and and they flip flop them around. So instead of line, they look really great all lined up and then they look nice. How long is this guy? Okay. They look nice and they also, well, when I make four, I'll be able to twist and turn them around a little bit and make it see how they look. Yeah, I think as you get older and stuff, the go cutter really, or any of those cutters will make a big difference. I don't make, as you see, I don't make that many quilts. And I have my scraps in a different type of system. So my go cutter basically just sits in the closet. yet or not I think my patrons have seen it one of those random bonus videos it might come out tonight or tomorrow night if it hasn't been out yet or if it has been out I don't remember <laughs> that new little purple thread cutter I received that as a gift I really like it Barbara did you is the go did not automatically elect you get the electric or a hand crank? Hand crank. I don't know if they're automatically electric. My iron's not hot. Teresa, you saw it on Patreon, right? I, has, has it been? I don't think it's been on YouTube, has it? The go is electric. Okay, thank you, Jackie. Yeah, yeah. I think the electric is really nice. I was watching it, Pat Sloan, this morning or yesterday. I think if to cut like multiple two inch squares, that I would really like. I'd like to have one where you can cut a whole bunch. I'm pressing away from the square. I have my little pressing block just out of the camera shot here. The go, yeah, I have the, yeah, I have the go. And I think the whole, the premise of it is really great to make things easier. And the ones when you get like a block, if you're going to cut out a whole bunch of the same block, I think that's really good too. I even have a little cutting mat here. And I might even have a ruler somewhere. Hello, Kelly. How are you today? Sometimes we get all excited because it's a new gadget or it's a revised gadget and everyone gets all excited and we want it because it just seems so cool. But then we get it and we realize, like the rotating cutting mats, many of you guys have said you have them and they're just sitting on a shelf. You don't actually use it because it's just not something you reach for because you just flip your blocks around. And it depends on the type of blocks you make, whether or not you know you want that. You're hanging in there. Can't ask for more than that, can we? Sometimes that, that's like the best thing you can do each day, as long as you're just hanging in, hoping the next day gets better. I don't know, all of a sudden I've just started this habit of putting my thumbnail 
next to the edge of the block so I can line my ruler up against it. I think it's because I need the new glasses that I've been doing that. I don't know, because it's just a weird habit all of a sudden to start. So now, if this, where's my picture? I think the odd numbers go up that way. Yep, odd go up, even go that way. So number two is the four and a quarter. Oh, I apologize for any noises you're gonna hear outside. They are building like seven houses around me and there's been dump trucks today and all kinds of loud vehicles going by. And they're not even like right next door. They're two, three houses one way, across the street, down back behind me, like they're crazy. So I'll put that one on there. This one can have a green. And I'm not even being particular, I tried to, get a variety of fabrics. So I thought, well, I'll just go ahead and put a bunch down. I do have more cut out somewhere. Oh. I'm sorry, Kelly, that makes it tough. Knees are tough. Knees and backs are very tough. I have a basket of more strips and a whole bunch more squares that I can use. While I have everyone's attention before we get any further, I wanted to make an announcement. I received this pineapple trim ruler as part of the advent that my friend sent me for Christmas. This is what we're going to be doing next month. The first, Pamela said Sunday, we don't have to go live on Sundays. The first Friday in May, we are going to make a pineapple block without the ruler. And then on the third Friday in May, on our in May on our live stream, we're going to make the pineapple block using the ruler. So I wanted to give you guys a head a head start in case you wanted to pick up the ruler or not. Or not. This one is by Jean Ann Wright, the pineapple trim ruler. I don't know it's from Creative Grids. I don't know how many other rulers they may be. I'm sure there's more than just one from Creative Grids. And you can, you'll see that we'll make the block without the ruler first. So you can make it without the ruler, but the ruler is supposed to make it so much quicker and easier, so we'll see. Terry, that's funny. That sounds like something I would do. Wheel around, use my chair, wheel around. Jody, no, I do not, because I haven't even used my ruler yet. Don't, don't be a troublemaker. I haven't had a chance. That's why I figured if I pick a month and say we are going to use them, then I will get a chance and I will use the ruler. I will use the ruler before we get into May. I just haven't had a chance. I made a tote bag once that had someone else's blocks on it, but the, the block is gonna look identical whether you use the ruler or you just do it regularly. There's no difference. It just helps you trim your block easier, that's all. Yeah. You're a troublemaker. We already know that. Jody and I have been talking quite often for several years now. So if anyone doesn't know, I'm not being mean to her. You just have to have a you have to have a strong hand with her, and you have to keep her in line because otherwise she's like a dog not on a leash. Not to compare you to a dog, she wanders off. So you have to be firm with her. Keep her in line. She might need to be beat every now and then. So if I'm not keeping an eye on her, you guys go ahead and just beat up her a little bit. Keep her in line. Yeah, oh, you wanna see a picture? Yeah, I know I don't have a block here to show you what a block looks like, no, sorry. You're lucky I found the ruler today. Kathy Iverson, my friend talked to me about it last year, like months before we did the advent. And she's like, I have an extra ruler, I believe she mentioned. And she's like, would you like it? I'm like, I have always wanted to make a pineapple block. I tried once in my early quilting years and I just was terrible at it. And I said, yes. Yeah. So I said, we'll go ahead and we'll do it sometime in 2022. But if I keep waiting, the next thing we know, it'll be 2023 ever used it. So I'm setting up a date now to make sure that we have plenty of time to watch videos and figure out the ruler and buy the ruler because I know even Amazon is not next day all the time. And maybe we might have to budget in for it. 
Oh yeah. The dyes, the dyes can be expensive, and if if you don't know if you're going to make more than one block or more than one quilt, and you spend fifty or seventy-five dollars or whatever those dyes are now, it's and you don't use it, it's like a waste. Does anyone know? Do quilt shops still have like their die cutters in the quilt shop that you can like rent for an hour in the store or something like that? When it first got popular, I know you could like bring your fabric in and pay a price and they would like cut all of your fabric for you for a quilt. Or you, you know, if you buy the fabric there and stuff. I thought that was really cool. You making it with Kathy quilts? I think that's going to be a fun quilt along for you all to do. I need to get my I need to get my uh, rear and gear here and pay attention to what I'm doing. And I have I've been setting up different bins and stuff. Okay, the Whip It Wednesday video was actually 45 minutes long, and I had to trim it down because I was chattering away to you guys. So I actually trimmed it in half. And part of the ones that I trimmed off was the fact that I have rearranged some baskets and stuff so I can keep my projects in them. So hopefully if the projects that I want to work on versus have to are within reach, then maybe I'll actually work on them a little each day. I'm finding a new rhythm and I just need to lock it down. Oh, I love YouTube University. I found some new stuff. I was looking I don't remember what I was searching for in the last couple days, but I found some new to me channels and it was really nice. Put more things in my watch later playlist, which is probably up to a thousand I know. All right, bye Kelly. Enjoy your lunch, puppy. No, this is a, I actually got this, I'm an Amazon gal. This is a sunbeam. This is a full iron. This mat is, it's a 10 inch mat. So there's a full iron. I do have the minis. I love this one. Pull it out of my bin. This is a pure steam. Again, you can find them on Amazon. It, I always worry that it's hot. I just, YouTube University. That's when you go to university to learn everything you need to know. So you go to school there. So you go to YouTube University to learn everything. So if you want to know how to replace an electrical outlet, you just go ahead on YouTube and look at You want to learn how to make a pineapple quilt block, you search it on YouTube. So it's not an actual thing. It's like a nickname, like calling Walmart Wally World. So I always think these irons are hot, even though I haven't used it in weeks. But I love this one. I don't put any type of water in it. So it's great when I need to do little things. And then if I have to, I'll spritz it with water. But I like to use this one for appliques and stuff like that because it doesn't have very many holes compared to a regular iron. And then I received this one in the advent. So this one would be great for the different ribbons and stuff like that but it's also used for I was told afterwards to heat press on like the the gems and stuff like that yeah this one here is very popular a lot of the quilters and crafters have this one plus it's not very expensive and look at the cord this one you just have to be careful I always like to mention it it does not turn off on its own so if you plug it in, it's going to stay hot forever, so you have to remember to unplug it. Nope, not especially YouTube. You know how they have floss tube? So the people that do cross stitch, they have floss tube. It's really not a different channel. And BookTube, I thought BookTube was a different channel, but it's like a hashtag. YouTube University is a nickname. That's what it is. It is a nickname. Do you know you can't use this as a ruler? Well, I guess maybe you could, but it wouldn't work that well.
This is really almost like large crumb blocks because I make my crumb blocks like log cabins anyway. This one, remember, we're only going to go on these two sides. Once we start building it out, we're not going to build it out on any other sides but these two. I've also seen it called a corner log cabin. Now, a lot of places on YouTube, they were calling it a half log cabin, and I don't understand how it could be a half. Maybe because you're only going, I just thought about it, because you're only doing half the sides, maybe that's why. Because, I mean, it's not half of a log cabin. Yeah, I love my iron. I, like I said, I picked it up on Amazon, and it cost me, it usually runs about $25, and it lasts me anywhere from two to four years. I put water in mine. I usually put too much water in, so it kind of bubbles out all the time, and I'm sure that's 100% my fault that it doesn't last any longer because of that, but... It is what it is. I, I'm not going to change my ways. Certain things I can adjust and change, but most of the time it's like I, I like doing it a certain way, and I'm not going to stop unless it's dangerous or it's going to be a problem. So now I need number five. We got green there and green there. We can't have any more greens. I'm going to put a green there. I'll put a yellow there. This guy can have red, and this one can have pink. And for the first few rounds, I'll just try to avoid using these blocks if I'm paying attention. If I'm not paying attention, then what happens, happens. That's what I was thinking, Sue, but it just, it just hit me. Like, it just, I've been thinking about it for days now, since I was looking at the videos and seeing. Because with what I do, is sometimes I watch videos to learn how to do things, and then other times I don't actually watch the videos but I have to search for things on YouTube so that I can learn what title to put on my video to make more people watch it. So the analytic part of it, so I see all the different names of the videos and I'm like, they kept popping up for the half ones. I'm like, huh? So then I watch a couple and I'm like, no, you're making them just the same. Being, I mean, I'm trying to be precise. Thank you, Terry. I'm trying to be... Sherry's got a good idea. Hold on, I need good ideas. I put a scrunchie on my wrist when my... Eye, oh, smart. I have two of the power strips. So when I leave the room, I turn all the lights off. And with the curtains up, it's dark in here. So I check for a red one here and a green one where my iron's plugged in. So if I see a color glowing, then I make sure that I at least have turned off the power strip so if I forget the iron then at least the power strip is off and before I go to bed I always open up the door and double check to make sure nothing's glowing because a lot of times I will plug my headphones in and let them charge while I'm eating dinner or something like that and if I forget about it well if I fall asleep in my chair then I'll remember before I go to bed so I try to get in the habit to make sure the door is locked and make sure all the power strips are off Scrunchie is a brilliant idea. That's smart too, Jody. Terry, I've heard that one too. Yeah, I have a lamp plugged into it. And you have to do it because we think, oh, you know, that's no big deal. It's not going to happen, you know. But people's places do catch on fire and burn down because of an iron. too much precious here. Oh, Susie, I'm so glad you went and checked it out. Red Pepper Quilts and Sew Mama Sew are my two favorite sites. I used to hang out on their blogs all the time. No. Crazy. Crazy Mom Quilts. Oh, I'm so sorry. But yes, I, I just love those sites. And Crazy Mom Quilts doesn't blog anymore she's over on Instagram because it just got to be too much I mean it takes a lot blogging is almost worse than YouTubing really because a lot of people excuse me <coughs> expect it almost every day to have a blog post up and when you're running a business you really kind of have to a red pepper quilt she has some great quilt patterns for free and for sale And 
and she doesn't ever leave you like hanging. She doesn't have, she always tells you like if you have to square a block, she tells you exactly what numbers are squared to. She doesn't leave the directions. At least I don't walk away going, huh? What did she mean by that? And I think that is just excellent. We all look differently and we all need different things from our teachers, but I just love, I love her blog. Yes, you have to go around. You have, you know, we have to have our mantras. We have to do our little, our little techniques so that we remember. I mean, my iron shuts off, but that doesn't mean nothing. The power is still going. Just because you unplug your phone, if you still have the cord plugged in, it's still using electricity. I've got myself scrunched up in a little corner here. So I like I like a very hot iron and I like steam. I think one of if I made more of anything, if there was more than 24 hours a day and seven days in a week, I would probably like one of those irons that are attached to a steam bank so you don't put water in the iron but it's attached to a, a reservoir and then you know you get your steam that way because then I wouldn't have to fill it up every 20 minutes oh you can't cut on your ironing board Oh, Terry, that's smart. I always check because mine has the light that says it's a red light that says it's hot and then a red light on the other side of the stove that says the burner's on. Because we've done the thing where I had to uh, I had to instigate the rule in the house for myself and everyone else that nothing flammable or meltable goes on the stove. We have a glass top now, so it's even more important. Because if a burner is hot and you're not paying attention or it wasn't quite turned off completely, because with the electric stove, if you don't hear that click, you haven't turned it off completely and things can catch on fire. So no towels, no pot holders that sit on the stove. I don't have any of that stuff because I'm a very cautiously paranoid. The gal that repaired my sewing machine told me to always unplug it because electric goes to the computer. I believe so, Sue. If you're plugged in, you're getting electricity. Even if you're in, I don't know about with the surge protector if that's turned off, but I unplug my machine. Everything in here gets unplugged except for the lamp and the tabletop fan. And they're all turned off off with the surge protector. I don't know how much of that would be actually true and if it does cause any issues, but because of our frequency of lightning here and with the accidents where the power keeps flickering on and off, I never leave anything plugged in. I leave, I'm horrible about leaving the oven on because when I take food out, I'm like, I don't know if it's cooked all the way, so I double check to make sure the chicken's not raw or something. And then I walk away and I never turn off the oven. So then the house gets hot and I'm like, why is it hot in here? Oh yeah, well, Maybe because you didn't turn the oven off. Crazy lady. Huh, I didn't notice that I did that. I have two blues right there. That's okay. They're going to get mixed up. Plus, tote bags have two sides, so I'm not worried. So now I need number four, which would be this guy. Don't want him there, don't want him there, don't want him there. Look at that. Put that there. So you, you don't have any red, so let's give you a red. Well, you can have this guy. Oh, we don't have any blue here, so do we have any blue left? Put this one. I'm not giving two of the same ones, yellow, or am I in the wrong one? Hmm. One, two, three, four. One, two, three. Well, you know what? This pile. <laughs> I don't have what I want. So I want a blue for here. And apparently I only cut one blue. Interesting.
Sorry for blocking your view. <clears throat> Excuse me. Allergy day today. I took an allergy pill before we got started, but it doesn't seem to like me. So there's one. There's two. There's three. There's four. Okay. And that's why I like to have some extra strips. Plus with me, I can always use the strips. It doesn't bother me. Thank you, Rose. Thumbs up, everybody. Vintage machines, you should always unplug them. Primitive motors, they can run your machine when you are not there. Wow. Wow, wow, wow. Hi, Tracy Quilts. Yeah, the lights, I like the lights. The lights are very important, so I know that it's on. Sherry, I do the same thing. As soon as I put a video on, I hit the like button. Doesn't matter if I'm going to like it or not. Two reasons. One, I want to know that I watched the video. So six months later, if I'm looking at log cabin videos again, I'll, I will, I'll see if it's a new video. So if it's got a lot, if I've liked it already, then I don't need to watch it again. But if there's one that doesn't have a like, then I didn't watch it. And it's also nice for the YouTube channel to let them know, hey, I watched your video and I'm sure I'm going to like it. And of course, if it's someone I'm subscribed to, I'm always going to like it. I get too easily sidetracked. Way too easily. So we are in April. Is anyone working on Christmas presents already? Now, I mean, I would, if I were making quilts, well, I made my daughter's quilt last minute, so don't go by me. But if I was a planner, I would imagine that you'd start making them early in the year and work on them all year long. I've been enjoying making the mini quilts with my patrons. And I can't wait to just make more and more and more and then decide, like, should I keep this one? Should I put it in the shop? Can I decorate my house with it? Santa sacks. Oh, yes. Like those big drawstring bags. Stockings and ornaments. Lisa Maria, I'm not sure if we can go by you. Don't you make Christmas year-round all the time? You're like the Christmas lady. Oh, that's wonderful, Haley. So everything's going good? Of course you have to make angels. Three Christmas gifts are ready. It's really just the kids and I and my secret Advent buddy. So I really don't, they, there's not many things. Robbie wants socks and the other kids are like, you don't need to make me anything. They all just get what they want and buy what they want when they want it and Christmas it makes it a little hard for Christmas a lot of times it comes down to <clears throat> more oh, excuse me a more of food so their memories of family foods that were favorites for the holidays they're like make some of that for Christmas I'm like okay March 25th seemed like the wonderful time to go ahead and start working on them when you're making the same thing each year for the holidays and you're selling them and stuff and they're that popular, I, I would imagine it's something you're going to keep up on. I'd like to go back to making the little cross stitch ornaments. I found that I'm not very good at the big cross stitch patterns. No surprise here that I seem to lose interest on them, but them little ornament ones, like the little angels with the lace around them and everything, I always enjoyed making those. Again, I got into the floss tube and I got sucked into everyone making the big full-size haids and all of that, and it's like, oh, you have to make this and I want this and all that. I have a Monopoly board that I started cross-stitching. Eventually, I'd like to finish it couple frosted pumpkins. Oh, 
Dixie Doodle. You in trouble. I don't see anything wrong with that. Especially if the recipient didn't know they're getting it. Then it's no big deal. So when they get it for this year, they'll think it's right on time. That's what I've learned. I don't tell anyone if I'm making them something. So then if I get it done, great. And if I don't, well, then that's not that big of a deal. It'll be next year. See, when I'm not using my thumbnail, I'm using the rotary cutter. I don't know, it just seems to make it easy to line everything up. So I know many of us watch Mom and Pop, Laura Lynn from the Mom and Pop Quilt Shop. Did you guys see her basket this morning? That poofy Easter basket was so cute. I haven't had my head wrapped around holidays this year. I thought that basket was super cute. It was like one of those Chinese lanterns that expand in the center and stuff. And I don't know, it was just adorable. Adorable. So if you're looking for a different type of Easter basket, you should go check out the mom and pop quilt shop. Cause again, adorable. Exactly Rose, it takes away the fun. And I just, I never seem to want to do it then. It's like, it's not a surprise anymore. Or if they ask me for something, then it's like, I have to do it. I don't want to have to do it. And I can't remember one, two, three, four. So now we're up on number five. One, two, three, four. I wrote the numbers down on this side. No, oh, that's my problem. Oh, that's where I messed up. Okay. so. Number one is three and a half inches. Number two and number three are both four and a quarter. Then number four is five inches. Mm -hmm. One, two, three, four. So number five again is five inches. So I need to go into my five inch bin and get those. That makes a lot of sense. Oh yeah, it would be a bit big. You could make it smaller if you can, and when you see the process of making it and you're comfortable adjusting things, you can make it smaller. Or if it's going to be like a process, you can start making it now and it'll be ready for her next year. Marie Scrappy Creations. I, I'm sure I saw it. I don't know, I'll have to think about it so many things I can't picture it. I know she did the laptop cozy sleeve thing or something recently. Ay, 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 caramba. All right, so I need one for here. I need a red. Too bad you're not getting a red. How about a peachy orangey kind? That'll work. I knew this was going to happen. I had everything all prepared and I'm like, I bet you something's going to go wrong and I'll cut extra strips because I'm going to need them. Jody, I pictured her sitting in the basket too. A hundred percent I pictured her sitting in the basket. That would be really cute. Maybe with some bunny ears. They do some amazing photography with the babies and stuff now, but I still kind of like some of the old-fashioned ones. I think one of my favorites is Justin was, oh, he was just a little guy, and he had the baseball cap on, and they put him in a little brown wooden chair, and we had him in like the red, white, and blue colors, and he was lifting off the baseball cap. He had a baseball bat and ball at his feet and stuff like that, and he didn't want the hat on, and it was just the cutest little picture. Justin this year is going to be 34. 
34 times. That's what's making me feel older. Not my age, but the fact that my children are aging. My father said the same thing when we were all growing up. He's like, I don't feel old, but now that you guys are having your own babies and you're 30 and stuff, now you're making me feel old. And I don't feel like physically old. It just, that number is just there. I was just like, wow. A little bit closer to 60 this year. Imagine that. Doesn't change anything. I never feel different on my birthdays or each year passing. I still feel I'm Robin. I'm not 53. I'm, I just feel like Robin. Robin of today. With all my knowledge and experience over the years. Oh, Jody, that would be fun. We did that with Robbie. We put him in front of our car every year through his elementary school ages, and we gave him like one of Rob's dress up shirts and stuff. Those pictures are so cute. Is it raining? No, they're sawing at the house two doors down. I thought it was raining. I got all excited. You know that sound the tires make on the wet road and stuff? I got excited. I thought it was raining. Wait until they start having great grandkids. Oh. Miranda's always said Miranda's never planned on having kids. She's never really wanted them. Justin always wanted them. And then after he got older, he's like, you know what, Mom? I am fine without having kids. We'll see how he feels a little later in life. But Robbie's like, oh, nope, I'm having kids. I'm having a lot of them. I'm having a wife. I'm going to have lots of kids. I'm going to bring them over so they can annoy you. I'm like, thanks. Hi, Kathy. You'll be 53 on the 11th. Well, happy birthday, Ella. You are the same age I am. I turned 53 in February. I really don't think age means too much. Ouch. What's ouch? My kids are now older than when I had my children. They haven't even thought of it. Rob and I knew we Rob and I knew from the very beginning that either he was going to be a broken old man, but we always knew that I was going to be the widow. And he, we decided early on that we wanted to enjoy our children and our grandchildren. And we wanted to have children early and just start a family. And we didn't want to be in our 50s and have a child in like middle school. And there's nothing wrong with that. It just wasn't going to work for us. And I have to be thinking about it. You know, I, I can't imagine myself in the last two years going through everything and having to take care of a very active you know, a teenager and stuff like that and having to help them process everything. So I'm really glad to be, you know, in my early 50s and, and not have children in the house and I'm, I'm kind of enjoying it. Except every now and then I'm like, I really wish there was someone here to do the things that I don't want to do. Oh, my kids? I'm, I, you know, I'm, I'm not in a position to, I drop things with the nerve damage in my neck. I, I'm not good at like doing a lot of things for long distance times and days and hours and stuff. So I'm not really prepared for grandchildren. It, it doesn't bother me. You, your kids, they have to make their own decisions and stuff. If they have grandkids, they have grandkids. If they don't, well, then they don't. Of course, I'm looking at it from the side that I've already had my children, but I can 100% understand when I was younger, I couldn't understand why people didn't want to have kids. But as I got older, I got to appreciate and understand. And when I met more people that didn't have children, to understand why and what they were going through and stuff. And I could see not having children. I could see that being your decision and all. I don't know how much nowadays people are like continue the family name and stuff like that.
pretty sure that Robbie George the third at many times in his life would have been happy to have not been the third can't help you there kids sorry I did it I got the name Justin and the reason I got the name Justin is I laugh and say it all the time anytime it comes up is I named Justin because I wasn't married to Rob at the time that is the only reason I got the name one of my children Rob named the other two so sorry Robbie George you are you're stuck see any problem with that to be 50 and have a seven-year-old and if that works for everyone that's fine I just knew that it wasn't gonna work for us because Rob has always had a lot of medical problems nothing anything serious but he's always had like bone problems and, and bad knees and a bad back and we're like if we want him to be able to enjoy grandkids we need to have our kids early because otherwise he's going to be out of luck one two three four five six Six is 5.75, so that is this pile. All right. You can have that one. And you, um, let's give you this one. Nope, put you over there. I think I needed to cut more reds. I can always adjust and add more of stuff on the other side of the bag when I make my next, because if these are gonna finish at, they are, what are they? Seven and a quarter unfinished. So when they're sewn in together, they'll be 6.75 inches square. And if I put two of them, that gives me about a 14 inch bag and I could put a border on it or put some sashing in between or something if I want. So that gives me enough and then I could just put four on one side and four on the other. So I'll do another one of these just for fun. Hi, Diana from Chicago. Oh, okay, Ella. Yeah, I don't know. <clears throat> I mean, we're all different and our different organization and energy levels and stuff like that. But as my kids got older and they were out of high school and stuff, and I was thinking, you know, this feels kind of nice. I like not having to be the, on, you know, be turned on as a parent all the time as your kids get older you hope you've taught them everything that you wanted to teach them and that they're going to be responsible and of course there's no guarantees kids are always going to mess up no matter what their age my teenagers messed up i mean knock on wood because you know nobody's in jail everyone graduated from high school nobody got pregnant while they were a teenager you know life goals we try to keep them easy I became a wife, mother, and grandmother. I'm 65 and have three stepchildren, four grandchildren, and three great-grandchildren. Sherry, that is awesome. Yeah, nieces and kids stuff and stuff. There's always going to be someone to create something for. <clears throat> we can always borrow a kid. <clears throat> now, my daughter is a, a godmother. To two adorable twin boys I think they might be four now I'll be getting ready for you know they do pre-k down here at four so they might already be in school and she's amazing with them she spoils them she takes them to the zoo and they go and do stuff she's not an everyday she's she's not self-centered but she needs to take care of herself before she can take care of other people she needs that quiet downtime she's having a hard enough time taking care of two cats Raising children 24-7 would just be too much for her. But she loves to go and see someone else's kids, get her baby fixed, run around and play with kids, buy them a cute clothes and loud, annoying toys. And then she goes home where it's nice and quiet and she is happy as can be. And she knew in the beginning that that's what she wanted. And I am very proud of her for figuring that out so early. Mm, that's scary, Ella. I mean, our parents said the same thing to us, you know, my grandparents and all, but this is a whole different thing. It was a whole generational thing. Everyone's different with, as, you know, 20, 30 years later, but now these generations, this world, it's a whole new thing. I was 
telling my daughter this morning when we were texting, I said, I don't know, it was my father passed away in 2009. I'm like, I don't know how grandpa would have handled this world. I think this would have been too much for him. 2000 was too much for him. I don't think he could handle 2022, the whole pandemic and all of that. All right, Sue, bye, have a great day. Oh, so you're, oh, I didn't know they were that old. Boy, that sounded old, but you know what I mean. I think it's wonderful that here we get to make our own decisions and we can decide if we want to have one child or if we want to have 20 or anything in between. And as long as you're able to love them and take care of them the best you can, I think it's awesome. Although if I have to admit, having three kids is enough, but if they all started having multiple children, I have a hard enough time with their birthdays and how old they are. I don't know, I would really definitely need a calendar and have everything written down. For you people that have all those grandchildren, great-grandchildren, keep track of all the birthdays. So aye, aye, aye. kids were younger and we were really into the whole cousins and all of that and all the family members were all getting getting along and everything I had printouts so I had January with a whole bunch of what is it uh, 31 days or whatever is in January and that way I could write each birthday down so I would do it for the whole year keep it in a little folder so when December came along I can look and see whose birthday's in January whoops who do we see who do we need to send a birthday card to let's not forget to call them but now Facebook Facebook does all that for me. It really tells me when everyone's birthday is. I like that. That's the only reason Rob ever remembered my birthday in the last so many years is because Facebook told him it was my birthday. If I'd have removed my birthday from Facebook, because he'd be like, I know it's in February. He'd be like, I know it's February 7th, but I just don't think he knew what day it was half the time. And not out of any, like, you know, senility. I just don't think he cared. Once he stopped working, I just don't think he cared what day it was. At least not by the number. He'd know if it was Monday or something. So you can stop making these at any point. After I trim these up, are we even? Boom, boom, boom. I'm going to show you before we get any farther in case we decide to leave before I make it all the way to the finished size. I want to show you what I was I saw on another video or... Maybe I saw it on Pinterest or something. The way they had them laid out was kind of cool. And I think you could really do a lot by playing with colors with this. Mine's coming. I'll put it on your Facebook. I, I think I might have you in my phone, Jody. But you've told me many times before, my birthday's coming. I'm like, when's your birthday? You're like six months from now. I'm like, you're telling me now? I can't remember tomorrow and you're telling me six months in advance? Oh my goodness, Jackie, that's funny. For those watching the replay, if you can't see the comments, Jackie said that um, where are we? her son remembers her birthday because it's the same as the Marine Corps' birthday. Funny how they can remember things like that. Told you, Jody's a troublemaker. I set up my phone, and I think the way I set it up for the alerts, when I know someone has a birthday that I'm going to want to send something to, I set it up so it tells me like two weeks in advance, and then I have it set up so it tells me like a week in advance, and then it tells me on the day. So when the two weeks in advance goes, it's, it'll be like, oh, Jody's birthday is in two weeks. I'm like, oh, I've got plenty of time. I'll make her make her a card or a fabric postcard pop it in the mail and then it's like it's one week away and I'm like oh I haven't done anything yet oh no next thing I know it was yesterday so let me think if I could see I saw I mean look at from your angle so they had this one here let me just lay these out a little bit like this so here's our log cabin 
And they had it to weigh, it was like, I think it was like that. Let me look through. Can't see it, Robin Suzanne, moving on up. I don't know if they were different sizes or something, but it was like, I think it was like this. So it made, the way the colors were, it made these look like 3D and then these look recessed. And I thought it was the neatest thing. If I can find it again, maybe I'll put it in the Facebook group. I tend to never find things again. I don't know about you guys, but I never find things. Oh, right, Barbara? Oh, April Fool's, that'd be a tough one. I never know the day of the week. Yes, I have my pill container Sunday through Saturday. That's how I know what day of the week is. And if I need to know the date, I have to look at my phone because I never know. And it looks like my computer is doing something goofy. Hello, computer. Put me on a high quality speed. I want to see my hands amazingly. Thank you so much. YouTube has been popping things down. Maybe it's my internet connection, but it's been popping things down to one of the lowest quality and stuff like that. It drives me crazy. Hi, Cindy. Rose, I do the same thing. I have private photo albums on YouTube that I've labeled like phone dump 2022 projects that I like you know and I just take a whole bunch of pictures on my phone and then I just download them or upload them all to Facebook and let them just sit there because I can't have that many on my phone when you look at my kids laugh you look at my phone it's pictures of my cats and pictures of fabric and crafty things they're like mom no one will ever know you have kids I said no you guys are my favorites I have at least one picture of each child and then look at your phone. You don't have pictures of me. I don't want to hear nothing. Okay. One, two, three, four, five, six. Number seven is 5.75. That was the one we were just at. Yeah, seven. Odds go up here. Oh, yeah, I definitely didn't cut the right stuff. Try your blocks on point with all the square on the lower left. Maybe that's what I saw, like this. I know for the tote bags, I'm just mostly gonna sew them together because there's only four of them. Maybe it was, I'm sure that's 100% a mess that I have. Oh, because You guys know that I'm terrible at on point stuff, right? That might have been what it was. And maybe they did the next row. Let me see what that looks like. I don't know. But their squares here were much smaller, so it made a big difference. This is a quite a large square. Normally the the square and the logs are about the same size, aren't they? Oh, what, taking everything from your phone and putting, yeah. And I, I actually, I upload a lot of stuff to my Facebook Messenger. I message myself on Facebook all the time. And I, Rose, when I make more of them, I'll go ahead and play with it. Thank you. I, I'll, I'll remember that and I'll see what I can do. For the tote bags, I'm really thinking I'm just going to, since it only would be four, they'll just go together like this. And I'll look and see. I don't think they're going to need, because this is almost like sashing. If I, if I have to build them out more, I can make a smaller tote. They don't need to be huge. And then just put them like this. I'm actually not liking this huge block down there. Thanks, Carla. You know, I said I'm going to put the little rose, the uh, red berries in the, um, excuse me, the little tote bag in the shop. And I'm like, okay, I'm going to do it. And I took all the 
pictures, I edited all the photos, I got them uploaded to my computer, and then I left the craft room. Two days later, I'm like, whoa, I did not put that into the shop, so I had to go back and put them in. So I totally flaked on that one. Put that guy there. Actually, what do you think? I mean, should I do more rounds or do you think that's enough? What size are these? I mean, I would need more per tote bag. So right now these are five and a half, so they'd finish at five inches. So at five inches, I could put three across and that would be 15. Thank you everyone. So what do you think? Should I keep going or should I just start a new set? Maybe I'll start a new set. I don't know. It's already four o'clock. I don't want to sew anymore. You want to see what I'm working on with my patrons? I'm so scattered brain this week. I've been cleaning the garage and like seriously cleaning the garage. Obviously, no one's been out there. Well, you wouldn't know, but the garage was Rob's domain, so nobody was allowed out there. And it has the washer and dryer, so I mean, of course, I did go out there, but it was his place to hang out and stuff. But after he really started having problems with the nerves in his back and stuff, he didn't hang out there as much. So it's been at least, you figure, three years. He's, he'll be gone three years in October, and then however many years before, and he just... <laughs> No one's been out there, so it's been like super dusty, and there's like sockets all over the place, and it, it's just a disaster out there, so I've been working on that. Bye, Sherry. Happy Easter. We are going to go, well, it's going to be Good Friday, so I don't know if anyone's going to really want to hang out with us, but we'll be going one more time. We'll go live one more before Easter. Enjoy your weekend and your week and your month. What was I talking about? Talking about the garage. Yeah, oh, so I don't know. I've just been cleaning out there and I'm just tired. <laughs> I'm just tired. It's worn me out. So you really do a lot with these. I, like I said, that, that big square is just throwing me there. I might actually put a stop to this and try again with more variety of the strips and start with a smaller square. This is three and a half. I think I might go down to two and a half and change it up. You'll be here with us on Good Friday, Jody. That will be amazing. Wait till you see what I have here. Patrons and I, if you haven't noticed, we've been doing a lot of mini quilts. Been having a lot of fun doing mini quilts and mug rugs. Over on my Patreon page, you get an extra video every Sunday and little random videos. You get those early, but you also get to vote on our projects. Add a button. Add a button to the lock cabins. You top stitch 15 cozies. That's awesome, Jackie. I'm so glad we could keep you busy and help you get through the worst part of it. But I put up anywhere from five to 10 mini quilts and variations form a square of the first four blocks then each round it will grow into a 3d effect oh so you want me hold on hide the tulips so you think i should sew these together as is you know maybe change them around and move or whatever and then just keep going around and around from this point kind of cool a sashing and cornerstone I do like that too but I don't know if I'd like it with one maybe when I get to the size that I want for the tote bag then do maybe a wider one around it but I don't know if I want to keep I oh, look at that those are all lined up and everything I I would want to have um, I like the scrappiness of, gosh darn it, when you only have a handful of fabrics and you didn't do very well on your sorting, look, no matter how I turn it, there's going to be some fabric that's touching it. 
Yeah, I like it. This, this I like much better. Blocks to the inside, yes. Maybe this is what I saw. Maybe the way they did it, they had colors here matching, the colors there matching. I don't remember. I'm terrible. I look at so many things every day and watch so many videos that I just can't keep it all in my head. I do like this. This is much nicer for the tote bag layout. And this is going to be one of the tote bags that I'm not going to put a bottom or anything on it. This is going to be the entire tote bag. So I am... I am going to just... I don't know. I, I have to... I, I, I'm going to draw a picture. I can't take a picture with my phone to remember it. So I'm going to draw a really bad picture because... Sketching and drawing is not my thing. See? And funny thing is, tomorrow I'll understand this, but three days from now? Nah. Uh, watch live stream 410. Because I don't know how many minutes it's in, so it'll tell me. There. That'll help me. Okay. Thank you. I think I really like that. Turn the opposite corners around. So you don't think that you don't want them all this way. You want them. All right. I have to go and look. I have to look. Oh, I can see it on the computer. I have to look from here. I think this. I think this is what I saw. But it was in such dis the logs, the strips were wider and they were, some of them like settled down, it was almost 3D. Some of them popped up so much that it was, I think this was the layout that it was. And it just, everything just like 3D right off of the quilt. I think it had blacks and reds and whites, but I could be making things up because I tend to do that a lot. I think you can have a lot of fun with this. This project right here from Red Pepper Quilts, I wrote it down. If you made 63 quarter lot cabin blocks, you can make a 48 by 60 quilt. And that's just with this. And I, you'd have to look at her blog, but I think she might have only done it simple like this. I know she was talking about doing some of them on point. So I don't know. I don't have enough blocks to play with on point. But I think I'll make several more. And I don't know that I'll make them any larger than that. At five and a half inches, I kind of like that size. Mark your squared block on paper. Mm. I'll have to come back and watch the video. because, Well, if you guys watch, I, I do one thing and then I change it up in five seconds. You watch, you watch one scene on the video where I have everything laid out and then you watch the next part of the video and I've totally changed it. But check this out. I just, I gotta show you because I just love this so much. I use my blender fabrics for this. This is just start of it. This is um, Tulip Time. It's a mini quilt that you can find for free online, Tulip Time. And then there's going to be pinwheels down at the bottom and then some white borders all the way around it. But isn't that so pretty? I love how this is turning out. And all the pinwheels down there are going to be the same thing as the tulip fabric. And I think that is just going to be so sweet. It's one of those things is like, do I put it in the shop or do I keep it? I'll have to see what it looks like after I quilt it. Thank you, Rose. But I think my back is hurting me. My brain is fried. I think we might be done for today, guys. Thank you so much for hanging out with me. Sorry, Patty. Sorry, you have to make extra things now. That's what happens when you watch other people's videos and read blogs and books and stuff like that. These are blender fabrics from fabric.com. They don't read, did I say Santi blenders? I don't know what I said, but they're blenders. So they read as one color, but when you look at them, they're modeled. This one's from Joann's. I got that when I got Miranda's oh, Harry Potter stuff. And these blenders from fabric.com are interesting. They feel like stiff and crunchy, so even the greens are from them. 
and they feel kind of thicker and firmer, but when you iron them, they kind of settle down and they feel real thin, just like all the other fabrics. I think there's a either a white strip here or this, I think I'm gonna use this green strip. I don't remember what I cut. And then you have the pinwheel and then you have another green strip and then there's the white border. So it's so pretty. I'll probably put it in the shop. What I tend to do is I put things in the shop and I let them sit there for six months or a year and if they don't sell, then I take them out and I keep them for myself or give them as gifts. Oh, that's what you meant. Okay, Jackie, I thought I said something wrong because, you know, I say wrong things all the time. I always say something wrong. Now, I don't know what it is. It's from, as I said, it's from fabric.com. It doesn't have salvage. It has the solid color on both sides. There's no, like, words or anything on it. It's just their blender fabrics. I got them on a really good sale a couple years back and bought a whole bunch of them. I'm just about out now. It's very, very sad. I love my six and a half bow ties done while listening today. You're very welcome. Bow ties is on my list of blocks. All right, Jody, go take your nap. We're going to do bow ties sometime this year. There's two different types of bow ties you can do, a regular one and a 3D one. I had so much fun doing the 3D pinwheel that I thought we would dabble a little with some 3D blocks throughout the year. Hi from Jacksonville, Florida. Hi, Laura. You got some rain today, didn't you? Or yesterday? I'm way down here in Cape Coral, far, far, far away, hours and hours. Yes, thank you everyone. I would love to have some likes on my video. And if you see something you like, please feel free to share or to pass it on to someone else. There's a little share button you can share on Facebook or you can email it to someone or put it on Pinterest or whatever. Again, we are going to, next month, we are going to work on the pineapple blocks with the pineapple, pineapple trim tool. So we got this cool, funky ruler I got for Christmas. We have one more. We have Good Friday coming up. I don't remember if I had a block plan for you all. I'm not, I just know Jacksonville's in Florida and it's way up north. Never been to, I think I've been through Jacksonville. It's like, what? seven and nine hours for me to get out of Florida. That's why I never really leave Florida. It's a very long drive. You, you spend the majority of your very first day driving and you're still in Florida. So it's like you start out at breakfast and at dinner time, you're still in Florida. It's very discouraging. So if anyone has a block that they would like to do for our live stream block videos we can go ahead i take suggestions all the time i have a couple suggestions coming up for a quilt as you go log cabin table runner and someone wants to see how to do a recessed zipper in a tote bag i've only done that once and struggled with it so that should be an interesting video for those of you that aren't going to be with us on good fridays the next time we're going to go live i hope you guys have a wonderful easter if you are celebrating easter Thunder? Nope, a loud vehicle. I'll show you my calendar, then I'll let you go. It was nice to switch over to April's. So it's a very pretty calendar page. So, hope everyone has a great weekend. Thank you so much for hanging out with me while I played with my quarter log cabin or half log cabin, however you want to look at it. I'll see you guys. I really think you've got one of these videos for this purple thing coming out soon. I want to say tonight or sometime this weekend. It comes out two days when you're when you're with me as a patron from the two dollars and up level. You get the random videos two days early, and then they two days later they post on YouTube. I have a quilt trunk show type thing that's going to be coming up. We also have one more video of this on how to actually build this guy and put it together. I saw Pat Sloan showed in January's Quilty Type box. I think it's from the Fat Quarter Shop. She gets hers. They had a different version of this in that box. So that's it. I'm going to press the button. Thanks for hanging.
me. I'll see you guys. Where's the button? There we go. <laughs> Bye.